Shepard. What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm here working on the red brick house as always. And it's nice because even though I'm working here in the dust and the dirt, I got television on here. In fact, it's incredible to have television here. What's so funny to me is I'm sitting here watching television, or you know, while I'm working, and I'm listening to Colin Cowherd. Colin Cowherd is talking about basketball. Right? Talking about basketball and the Golden State Warriors and you know, maybe they're gonna blow the whole team up and this, that, and the other. And you know, I, I'm not a basketball guy. I'm not a basketball guy. We're talking about basketball. Automatically he goes back, it's like Dak Prescott. Everything is Dak Prescott, Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott, Dallas Cowboys. You know, we're the punch of it. It's like everybody out there is winning Super Bowls except for the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. It gets to be ridiculous at some point where you gotta say enough is enough. Now, David Hausman, and I'm not sure why I haven't seen him on um, Speak For Yourself lately, it's turned into the Shady McCoy is auditioning for uh, Undisputed show where it's nothing but Dak is ass, Dak sucks. No, they can't do anything because they got that, that quarterback. Everything is Dak, Dak, Dak. And that's where I said there should be a Dak tax where everybody has to pay the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott for using his license. I'm serious. Dak Prescott should get his name trademarked so that way every time they mention his name, he gets paid. Seriously. Because all these shows... Every single day, it's nothing but Dak Prescott. What Dak Prescott didn't do. You know, I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, uh, everybody's talking about how great Justin Herbert is. Justin Herbert is great. Justin Herbert. Oh, I was like, what has he done? Josh Allen. Oh, my God. Jo what has he done? What has he done? Have they won Super Bowls? No. It's freaking ridiculous. Now, here's the thing. People seem to think, Everything only, only boils down to the quarterback. And I'm not going to say Dak doesn't have his warts and Dak hasn't made mistakes because he has. But he's not the only one. You don't look around and say for all these years that the Cowboys haven't gone to the Super Bowl that it's been the quarterback only. We have seen some of the worst play calling. We have seen some of the worst clock management. We have seen over the years, you know, give you an example. Pete Carroll. When he has a lead at halftime, be it one point or 20 points, he don't lose. He don't lose. Ever. Well, he has a couple times. But it's like 3% of the time is how many times he's lost, something like that. Cowboys, we find ways to lose. Instead of realizing we're ahead, we need to play clock games and become – more of a running team, right? Slow the game down. I mean, excuse me, use up the clock. You know, stay in bounds. We don't do things like that. We still keep slinging the rock and not taking time off. Case in point, twice we've been up against the Detroit Lions by 21 points and lose. We had the famous Matt Flynn game that we lost to the Green Bay Packers, Green Bay Packers, where we we're up 26 to 3. Those things, that ain't on the quarterback. That's on the coaching staff as well. How many times have we seen clock management issues? How many times have we seen, you know, say, somebody tip the ball up, you know, a perfect pass, and ends up being intercepted, pick six, and they end up winning the game? How many times have we seen Aaron Rodgers make the greatest throw of all time against us in the playoffs where we lose games? It's not solely the quarterback. There are other issues. You know, when people go through and say, well, you know, Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush, man, he was 4-1 and one with this team. You know, we need to start him. It's like, do you realize how good the defense was playing in those games? Cooper Rush averaged 20 points a game. We averaged 30 points a game with that. Clearly, those things aren't even. 
if you get 10 points more and you lose, then that means your defense isn't doing the same things. I'm just saying, but, but be that as it may. Here's the question right here. Now, the Cowboys, you know, when, when Mike McCarthy got the job, he spoke about analytics, you know. We're going to be the most analytical team out there, right? We're going to use analytics. I study analytics every day. Analytics, you know, I go to bed with at night. We watch every single play, right? Okay. Now, much like we did back in Tom Landry's day, Tom Landry, they hired a mathematician from India who knew nothing about football, but he knew numbers. And he came up with a program for the Cowboys to use with their computers to determine whether or not a player was going to be a good player out of college. Hence, the Cowboys were able to get better personnel than everybody else because of analytics. Analytics will tell you what to do when you're in a situation where you're up by a lot of points. Run the damn football. Burn the clock. Don't take chances. Don't give the other team the opportunities to get back in the game. And that's where you hope that now that the Cowboys are the analytical team, that we went out and we got the mathematician, the statistician um, from the Ravens, um, a very young, bright mind, will the Cowboys be a smarter team going forward? If the Cowboys, and, and understand this, okay, you know, people will say, you, you don't get it, it's just Dak Prescott. Okay, I'm not talking to those people, okay? Those people are going to be the way they are regardless. There's no changing their minds. But if you understand football, We've seen great teams that aren't making the Super Bowl. We've seen teams that were 15-1, and one, like the Minnesota Vikings, not make the Super Bowl. We've seen great teams not get anywhere close to it. We've seen the New York Giants' as wild cards going all the way. And I won't say that they were the best team in football, but they played well at the right time, and they played smart. And that could be the difference for the Dallas Cowboys. A play here and a play there, because in any game, I don't care if it's a one-point score or if it's a blowout. You can find five plays that are game changers. And if you can prevent those plays happening against you, you will win more times than not. And I'm hoping and praying that this will be a much smarter team and organization going forward as we get ready for this season. You can only hope. We definitely have better players, you know, personnel. We've got a good coaching staff. We've got young youth on our side. If we can keep healthy, I believe we got a chance. Regardless of what these jackasses have to say on the uh, four-letter networks and stuff. Whew. So much to do. But on the roof, patching some spots out there. I've been cutting concrete here and putting in conduit for the thermostat. I gotta go out here and mix up some mortar um, plaster so I can plaster the walls. I got one more cabinet to build for the kitchen. I need to glue together the countertop. Mm. Always a lot to go. Join in. Join in and see if we can make this wall look nice. Aight. Peace.